Oh, good afternoon, and welcome to Tuesdays with Pastor Jamie. I'm your host, Pastor Jamie, coming to you from my study today. Uh, I'm inside today because it's in the 90s outside. It just seems like yesterday that um, I was podcasting from inside the house because it was too cold, and now it's too hot. It was 105 here on Saturday. Wow. Anyway, uh, I hope you're enjoying your summer and uh, anything new going on. Um, hi. Uh, in my life, uh, my dad, his brother is named Rob and he lives in Montreal, Canada. And uh, his wife, my aunt, died, Rokaya, uh, from cancer. And her funeral was live streamed um, yesterday. So it's just, just tough when family members die. So uh, with that, uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm coming you, to you from uh, live from Moorhead, Minnesota, 56560, right across the school from, right across the street from the middle school, which is on the, uh, it'd be southeast side of town. We had a big storm last night. Lots of rain, lots of thunder, lightning. Hope everybody stayed safe. Um, so today, um, again, as I try to do each week, is uh, take some scripture that will be um, read in church on Sunday, if you're a mainline church. Um, and today I'm going to try to tackle the Apostle Paul uh, in 2 Corinthians. Um, Paul is always tough. Um, because he's super intelligent. He was a rabbi, a teacher, a scholar, a professor. Um, and he writes in Greek. And it doesn't translate very well. Um, so maybe that'll help you today. As I try to um, translate uh, the Apostle Paul. So we're going to be in 2 Corinthians. His second letter to, uh, to Corinthe. And... Um, It'll be the fifth chapter. So if you want to get ready for that before uh, I read it and pray, you can do that. And again, um, not to insult your intelligence, but you got the Bible on the back is New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then you'll see Acts and Romans and then First and Second Corinthians. So it's right about there. Um, so you can read it um, as I go along, Second Corinthians 5. Um well, why don't we pray first, and then, and then uh, we'll uh, get into it with the Apostle Paul. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, for this day, for this moment, for this time, we give you thanks for all of us have a short time here in these earthly bodies before we pass away. Help us to live for eternal things, things that will last as we share them with our neighbors. Help us today as we learn through your word, written by the Apostle Paul. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're uh, going to 2 Corinthians, and like I said, it's hard uh, wording, um, both because Paul was so intelligent and also because it doesn't translate very well. But it's our Bible. So this is 2 Corinthians 5. Um, now, um, yeah, I'll read it first and we'll go. So 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 17. Paul writes um, to the church in Corinth for the second time. So we are always confident even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are far away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence. And we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. 
Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again by giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that we may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. This is the gospel, or this is the um, word of God. Um, so kind of confusing, huh? Not, not the easiest thing to, um, um, translate or listen to. Um, and I'll try my best to try to, uh, to fill you in a little bit about this. Um, so I'm kind of walking through the verses, uh, again, it started out with, um, Paul encouraging, uh, the people in Corinth to have confidence. Um, he says that three times confidence in today's reading. And um, what he's trying to do is to assure them um, of what they're doing, assure them of uh, that it's worth it to live uh, following Christ. Um, he talks about this separation, maybe you noticed, about the body, and he doesn't really say spirit or something else. He just says, while we're in this world, we're in the body, um, verse 6, and we are away from the Lord, which is kind of weird because... Christ is with us always, but I think he means life and death, life in this world, and life in the next. So whatever it is, uh, he states it that way, that we are still in the body here, um, but that our faith has already started. Something new has already started in us now. We don't have to wait till after uh, we die to see the kingdom, the reign, the way of God. We know it right now. Um so um, he's speaking about how Jesus is not physically here with us anymore, not with him anymore. And um, because of that, we cannot see, taste, touch, smell, whatever, uh, him in real bodily form. And so instead of walking by sight, we walk by faith. But the goal is always the same. Whether he is here or he's not here, the goal is that we're pleasing God. We, our goal, our purpose in life is to please Christ and, and nothing else uh, as far as the ultimate goal. Um, and he talks about uh, making amends. I just wanted to say something about the word recompense. It means to make amends um, for the things that you have done in uh, our bodies here. Now, he doesn't say that the bodies here are necessarily evil. He says uh, things that we do in in this world, in our capsules that we live in our bodies. Some is evil and some is good. So it's not like our bodies are inherently bad or evil. Um, it's just that it are in our bodies, in our lives here, hey, um, we are sinful people, okay? Um, so that's how he starts out, by telling them that to have confidence, to do what they're doing, to follow Christ, and even though Christ is not here in the body, and even though we struggle in the body, um, it, the ultimate goal is to please God, is to serve Christ. Now, I want to, just for sake of pr presentation today, I want to skip to um, the last verse there, if you have your Bible there, verse 17, to, to kind of give you a theme for today's uh, reading. It says, verse 17, If anyone is in Christ... There is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. So what do you make of that? What does that mean? Well, in Christ, 
we know a different reality from the rest of the world. Um, Paul is attempting to unpack that reality. So Paul, being the scholar that he is, he he is always trying to explain what we already know, um, and he does it in kind of theological terms because that's how he thinks. But he's explaining what Jesus has done and what that that um, epic event of him dying and ra being raised means for us. And um, he's speaking at a time to people who are under uh, the subjection of an evil empire, the Roman Empire. And so um, these people, they, they live in, well, it's kind of like Israel and Palestine. They live in a time like that where things are uncertain and what do you hold on to and how do you live? It's hard for us in the West here, in North America, to understand that kind of stress, that kind of poverty that um, they go through. But the people that he's writing to um, are going through this. And uh, he says, but Christ in the cross has canceled the alienation we once had. So our sin alienates us from God, separates from God, makes us do things that are not God, okay? But, but we're trapped in that, okay? But in Christ's death and resurrection, we are joined to Christ in his death, like his death. We are joined to Christ in his resurrection, like his resurrection. And it has made us new. It has canceled out what we couldn't do, hmm? it has canceled out that alienation, and in Christ, we are empowered to live as God intended us to live. Um, to please God, to seek not only what's best for God, but what is best for our neighbors, which is different from the, the ways of this world. Um, in verse 15, he says, Paul says this, Christ died for all so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who, was, who died and was raised. So the being new in Christ is different from the, the patterns and the habits and the purposes and the goals of this life, which in this life um, is to satisfy the self, right? So in Christ, there's a reversal there. And it is that we hope and wish and do the best we can um, for our neighbor. That's what it means to be in Christ. Uh, and if we have any issues with that, we just look at the life of Christ and how he lived and how he loved people. So Paul is, is trying to assure us here that God's kingdom, God's reign, God's way, God's reality begins now in our current bodies, okay? And Paul assures us that we are to be confident that we are freed from our selfish, vain ambitions uh, of this world that are uh, continuing to compel us to prove that we are worth something by our accomplishments at the expense of others, right? And we are a new creation, um, right now, no matter where we've been, what we've done, we are all a new creation. Um, so therefore, be open to the new things that God will do in and through us, surprising us in all sorts of new ways again and again and again. Instead of trying to remain in our old patterns, our old habits, our old thoughts, things that come from our mind... Um, that are not eternal, uh, and be open to what God can do in and through us, and surprising us again and again and again. Because, again, the purpose of the world is to um, serve its own standards. Now, Paul calls the world's standards, um, where is that, verse 16, he says the human point of view. He calls the world's way, the world's patterns, habits, um, the human point of view. And, it, and he says that it allows us to take hold um, of that which is free from those patterns, habits, 
um, that are life taking and to be open to the spirit which surprises us and gives us new things that are life giving instead of like life taking. So it opens us to opportunities to love, to accept, to forgive, to reconcile, um, to serve other people and not just ourselves. Jesus says, um, from a human point of view, um, Jesus must have looked like um, he was out of his mind, according to verse 13, according to last last week's gospel. Because when you look at his goals, purposes, ambitions, the world must go, geez, what's wrong with this guy? And in fact, the way his life ended, he was crucified for being a political a criminal. So people would look at that and say, that's a failure. But in the spiritual point of view, um, which is a different point of view, um, things are different. We no longer, um, Paul says in verse 16, we no, no longer know him in that way, but we know him in a new way. Um, even though he lived in a human body and even though people might have thought he was nuts and out of his mind and a criminal, we know him in this new way. Um, this w new way that is powerful to love your neighbor, to, to reconcile with your neighbor, to, to forgive your neighbor. I mean, what, I mean, that's really powerful if you've had those experiences in your life. So God is continually giving us opportunities to do good God stuff, right? Um, because while we are still in these bodies, as he says, sin is still active in us, right? Trying to derail us from God's intent and God's will. But ultimately, God's kingdom, God's uh, reality is the true reality. Um, the love of all humans, um, this love that we, um, as human beings are always searching for and longing for, um, trying to understand. And, and we see love um, being portrayed in music and film and all their ways as not true love. Um, it, it's always a romantic love for ourselves uh, and not love for a neighbor. Um, so it's a powerful thing to focus on love for one another. Um, because that kind of love, um, overlooks, overcomes, um, prejudices and mistrust and different mm, understandings. And it, it moves us, um, in ways we never thought we would go with people we never thought we'd associate with, um, into mutual edifying relationships. And that's really the goal uh, of love. Now, I don't know if you've had that experience before of somehow, some way, God giving you an opportunity to love people that are different um, from you. As I was talking about my um, my aunt, Rukaya, she grew up in Egypt in a, in a small town near the Suez Canal. And in that town, there were a variety of people, Christians, Muslims, all sorts of different Hindus, different religions. There were, there were Italians, there were French, there were Arabic. Um, in fact, her first language was Arabic, but she went to a French grade school and she spoke French so well that her parents were like worried that she's forgetting Arabic. And so they had a, a friend of the family come in and, you know, um, kind of teach her again Arabic. So she went forget. And uh, then she immigrated in the 1970s, a woman by herself to Montreal, because of course they speak French there. And uh, she grew up with this um, understanding that differences are a good thing. That when you see someone who is from a, a different country, Italy, um, you try to, to see the goodness in what they have and from a different language and from a different uh, economic situation. And that's what Paul is, is talking about in Christ, that we love one another and we 
and the love that we have in Christ is something new and it will lead us to loving our neighbor as we love God because the two are always connected we, we can't separate those two so Paul is explaining here how to do that what this new creation means practically and and how we are to live out relationships um, with others he says to be confident in this don't listen to what the world says which is always me 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 my 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 but be confident that what you're doing uh, is the truth and that our reality is found in christ and not of different images uh, or different standards or different ideals uh, of the world and he says to trust in this promise to to look um, at what Jesus has do done for us, for all humanity, on the cross. There is no greater love than this, than to give one's life for another. And he died, and he was raised for us, for all people. So because of that, we are open to what God can and will do in us, in these mortal, sinful bodies of ours, uh, until the day that we are re reunited with him. Like he says in verse 8, he, he says um, to be home with the Lord as opposed to being away in the body. So this chapter, even though it's difficult, like all of Paul is, to, to, to read and to understand word by word, um, you can get the general concept. And throughout chapter 5 in 2 Corinthians, if you want to uh, read other parts of it, you'll see Paul explaining other things. But in this chapter, in this specifically, um, Paul is attempting to show us what it means to live by faith and not by sight. And so that's, that's our epistle, as we call it in church, which means letter. Um, second letter to the Corinthians in Corinth. Um, uh, Paul explaining how to live um, by faith and not by sight. Um, yeah, so that's what I have for today. Um, in terms of prayer requests, we keep to, we keep trying to pray all the the requests that we get from um, others, um, and just pass a few on to you. Um, I want you to pray for a particular person. I can't say her name yet, but her son died. And she's having a real tough time. Um, I want you to pray for a, a father who's been unemployed for a while now since COVID and is desperately looking for gainful employment. Um, I want you to pray for all who read uh, Paul and who are trying to live as yet by a faith that they be open to the newness of the spirit that new things are good things, not to be afraid of them. In fact, here's a little uh, little piece of trivia for you. When um, Darwin wrote The Origin of the Species, uh, which everybody calls evolution, um, he says, the species that survive, it's not because they're the smartest. It's not because they're the strongest, but it's because, you ready? <laughs> it's because they were uh, the ones who could adapt the best. Those who could adapt to the changing surroundings uh, in their circumstances were the ones who survived. I think that's interesting. So when God calls us to something new, to be open to that, that that's the spirit um, and not, not be caught up in our old ways and say, no, 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 I can't do that. Now I say that to you, but I also know in my life, it's, it's a tough thing too, because, you know, in church people come up, committees, boards, uh, council, and they say, okay, let's try this new thing. And I've tried it like 17 times and has never worked. I just kind of close the door <laughs> because it's something new and I've tried it a million times. and I don't think it's going to work. Um, but I have to be open to that too, that, um, uh, being a leader in the church, uh, is not saying my way is the right way, 
but it's being open to the Spirit of God that's moving all the time, um, constantly changing and shifting, and our job is to adapt to that. But keeping in mind that the 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 one that we're trying to please, if you want to put it that way, uh, is God, is Christ, and to keep focused on that. And so when we pray, we focus on that. It, it, it's, it, it's hard to be dishonest when you pray. And to pray, Lord, okay, show me the way. What is the way? How is this to be correct? And to keep focused on that as opposed to pleasing, trying to please other people in the world or other things. Um, and then you can pray for my family too um, on the death of Rokaya. Um, her husband was Robin. That's his nickname. I don't, we hardly ever call him by his real name, so I can't, I can't even tell you what it is right now. Um, but to, to keep our family in your prayers and all those families, whenever you lose someone that you love, it, it's so difficult. Um, but to remember God's promise that we will be reunited with them, uh, and with Christ one day. So. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, on this day that you've given us another day of life, we ask that you would help us be open to your spirit, to all the opportunities, all the things that you are preparing and doing for us and for others that we could see what you're doing, and get beyond our own selfishness. We thank you for freeing us from sin, but at the same time, we ask for your help as it is a daily battle. We pray for all those who are going through difficult times, those who are in the hospital, those who are struggling um, with their memories and, and with Alzheimer's and with getting old. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, I pray for Robin and for Maya and for our family on the loss of Rakaya. And we pray for all those who um, are looking for new jobs um, that our economy has forced them into um, to feed their families. And um, we also pray for people who are brokenhearted, people who have loved and lost and are counting on your love um, to be with and amongst them. We lift up all the people in our lives, along with our own prayer requests to you, Lord, in this moment, in the moments to come, and help us, Lord, to, to trust in your promise, your promise of everlasting life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, another podcast. Um, if you live here in Moorhead, just a reminder that we have services on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. And you can come. And now, starting Sunday, we're having coffee and something to eat in a little wrapped thing. I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, and then on the first and third Wednesdays of the month at six o'clock, we have worship outside in the parking lot, which is a lot of fun. And I encourage you to come to that. Um, and pray for our, I see Jessica Miller there, pray for, uh, the ministry of the neighborhood church, um, over in the Madison area in Fargo, as, uh, they continue to, uh, struggle with the highest poverty rate, um, in our community, um, and you can volunteer, if you'd like, to go over there and help them with their pop-up um, pantries, which every family will get a box of very healthy food, healthier than I eat, but healthy food. Um, they're handing out um, every other Wednesday as well. So if you're interested and want to meet people from around the world, want to meet people that are um, maybe in a different economic, social economic group than you are, just let us know and we'll set you up and uh, you can meet some really neat people over there doing the will of God. So that's it for today. And I hope you join me next Tuesday. Who knows where I'll be in the world next Tuesday. 
Um, but <laughs> thanks for joining me now. God bless. Take care. See you.